Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hey, Meg. Happy, oh yeah, I'm wearing my, I'm not wearing my green. I actually looked in my closet this morning because I'm like, I wonder if I have anything green that I should wear. No, I do not own anything green. So this is, so I decided to go for the next best thing, which is not green. The absence of green is black. So there we go. Yeah, I wasn't going to be streaming today because I was supposed to be teaching a, an individual workshop in my studio, but unfortunately it was canceled. So here I am. Um, we're going to have kind of a fun, a fun day, Friday. We're just going to have kind of a play date and it may not be that long because that's just the way of it. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to my, we're just going to go right into it. Let's go right to the workbench and, oh, nice. I, <laughs> there we go. This is how organized I am. Now I'm going to put this up because here's, here's the dealio. I just put up the first in a couple part tutorial on my Vimeo page. And we are getting started on these. In the first video, we made the bases with all the wires and the textured foil, and that is on Vimeo right now. And the next, vi the next video that I'm going to be doing, we're going to be doing all the color. But before I die, oh, let me get the, let me get my circle selfie in. Oh, there I am. There I am. Hi. Uh, but before we get, you know. Before I, sometimes I dive ahead with these Vimeos with less of a plan. So I really want to do a few tests. It's not samples. It could be samples, but we're going to be doing a little bit of testing with some of these colors that I've chosen. And I want to make sure that they are what I want to do for the final video. And so I've kind of chosen off the cusp these colors and I just want to see honestly how the opalescence play over some of these colors because I would rather not look like a total nincompoop on the Vimeo video. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, but I'm keeping the Vimeo stuff separately. If you want to then I'll take whatever we learned today into our, there might be a few changes in this, but we'll actually do the colors as on the Vimeo thing. So, but today is just really going to be playing around. Um, I've got, let me zoom in a little bit. Oops, hold on. Zoom. Can I zoom? Oh, nope, I guess not. We're not going to be zooming today. Um, yeah, so I had in my repertoire of other things, I had a little baggie of these, I don't know, I made a video a hundred years ago where I did some little circle samples and these are ready to go. I've got five of them and I thought I would use them to just try out some of these colors. I honestly don't know what flux I used because it's been a while and maybe I have it written down somewhere. Who knows? It doesn't matter um, because that will just have to remain a mystery. So I've got five of these. I've got a couple colors and I've got the kiln. Actually, I've already gotten the kiln heating up because we're just going to kind of dive on in. So yes, Friday play date with some colors and we'll all learn some things together because, you know, I've got an hypothesis that these colors will all look beautiful together. And now we're going to what would be the thing that you do to prove your hypothesis? The experiment. Ah, good morning, Angie from Arizona. Um, let me know if you get that kit. I did, I did put it in the mail. So I assume that is you, by the way. So yes, if you're just joining us, we're just going to be playing around with some colors. I've got these, these things that I made a while back and we're going to be putting some base colors down and then we're going to throw some different opalescence on. Oh good, I'm so glad. That was pretty fast then. Um, but yeah, we're going to throw some opalescence over and see what happens. That's honestly the 
extent of what is happening today since I didn't really have a big plan. I've got a bunch of other projects going, none of which are camera ready at the moment. So there we are. So let's start with I don't have to do five all at once. And we're gonna start with, I don't even know if this is one or two coats. It's probably just one coat of flux down there. And you can see they've been sitting around. There's even, there is a little bit of, um, the silver has gone a little bit brown, but that will get taken care of in the first. I probably should wash these with some soap and water. I might do that, but let's pick out the colors that we're going to be using first. Let's do the easy one. Uh, I'm gonna start, and we're just, I'm just really thinking about the interior part of these eyeballs, these colors to see if I like them. And I'm also going to do one with kind of these brown because I want to see how the hunter green opal looks over these colors. Because my concern is if they go white, it might look weird and milky. So there we go. And I still haven't attached any magnets to these samples that I made. But so we'll start, let me get... I've pulled some colors out, which is good. I have water. I did a little bit of prep. So, and we're also gonna play around with this opal beige, which I think is gonna be an interesting opal to put over this orange, but, or maybe it will look like garbage. I don't know. I do not know, and that is why we shall find out. So, We'll start with our colors. I'm gonna pull what we need, 737 Chartreuse. I've got some of that. Elf green, I've got, we're gonna to have to wash a little bit of that. 546 blue, we got a little bit of that. Forget me not, got a little bit of that. And then we'll get the T8 in the second one. So we're gonna do our first coat there. And you know what, we're just gonna do them one, one at a time. And you know, I think I will, take a moment so there's a big plane going over and you live near an airport that's what you get I'm going to take a moment and just wash these scrub them with a little soap and water because I've been like manhandling them hold on all right I'm gonna be right back here you can enjoy looking at that while I wash Nice and clean. Pick a good one. And what I'm gonna do, is I need to wash a little bit of that elf. Let me zoom, let me figure out my zoom. There we are, there we are. And I'm not gonna, I don't even have the other camera set up. Uh, the, we're not gonna be using the I don't think we need the microscope at all today. And honestly, we're not gonna use it because the microscope takes about 20 minutes to get it to actually work every single time. And I write it down like, this is how it worked this time. It never works, it never works the same way twice. There's always some kind of magic sauce that you have to do of like turning this on, turning that off, unplugging, and it's always different. So I just decided that I don't need microscopic today because it's Friday and a holiday so here's my green here's the the celebratory green right there 226 I hope everyone has some fun plans elf there we go Oh yeah, well, you know, I always, I consistently make the mistake of trying new things on way bigger projects that, that warrant it. And then if there's a disappointment, you know, I've incorporated it into a large project and I'm kind of sad about it. So I'm just, and also I want to be sure about these before we do a tutorial, so... 
we'll just see. We will see how everything is going. A little bit of that. That's probably more than we need. I'm so in love with this elf green. It is almost as nice as my favorite N37 chartreuse, the Nino Mia. So this is a Milton Bridge color. I love it. Very, very pretty. They know how to do their greens. So in fact, it's, I almost use them interchangeably, sort of. I think the elf, I have both out here. Here is the you can see how similar they are. Um, this one's a little yellower. This one's a little cooler. But other than that, honestly, most people probably would not be able to tell the difference. So, oh, Angie says, I bought the Meji knockoff microscope. Oh, I'm so glad, 300 bucks. Inlaid. She says, Google Vivor Micro Inlaid Mirror Multi-Directional Microscope with Spring Bracket. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm glad that it's working out. Does it have a camera attached to it? That would be excellent. Now, what am I doing? All right, we're going to just wash these. So there's one coat, most likely, of flux on these things. Again, I made them a while, months and months, maybe a year ago. So I don't remember what the flux is. Hopefully it's not super soft. We'll find out. So if there's yellowing in the flux, that will be par for the course. And they've been sitting in a baggie for a long time. But Oh, no camera, she says. Well, fair enough, for $300. Still a good deal. There we go. Oh, do I want some yellow too? No, no, this is gonna be the, the blue and the green. So yeah, I'm gonna put my colors down and then I'm gonna inlay the opalescent over it and we'll see if it gets gross. And to be honest, if they look gross, I, I know this is totally gonna be, it's, it's labeled as an opalescent project, but, but you know, <sighs> opals are my nemesis, my nemesis. So we got those, we've got this, and here's my plan. My plan is to, get a decent brush. We can actually do kind of a middle size brush. Let's see, brush selection. I say middle size and then I go for this one right here. Looks like it wants to be perfect. And what I'm gonna do is start in the center. This is going to be, I'm kind of testing out these colors and we're not doing the black in the center because no, because I don't want to deal with wires and I don't want to deal with black. So we're just doing this portion as the tester strip. And I'll just have to put a sticker, at, after it's all done, I'll just have to put a sticker on the back with what colors I used if I ever want to use this as a sample. So that that's kind of what we're going to do. Or maybe a little light. Let me turn this light on. There we go. Helps me, don't know if it helps over there, actually, what about over there? There we go, good enough. Now, we'll start with the forget-me-not around the edge. I've started grinding lump enamels again because I got that batch of like 24 lump enamel colors. So whenever I try to do, a, I try to grind one or two or three colors a day. And eventually when I get all 24 ground, I will have I'll reward myself with a day, a day of sample strip, two days, two days of sample strip making. I had, I'm going to project mesh, not 
next week, but the week after I'll be gone for an entire week. I will be enameling. Oh, there's going to be so many great enamelists there. It's going to be at Pocasin Arts, and we're going to be there for a week. And I had thought that I was going to spend the week doing sample strips, but they have a lot of rules about sifting leaded enamels, and so I realized that it was not going to be, that is not what I'm going to spend my week doing. Um, so I'm going to be doing something else while I'm there. There we go. I'm just kind of hugging that. Remember, you can always go darker. And then we're gonna go right into the center with my favorite. Let me get a piece of 737. So I'm just gonna do a nice big lump Big mass of water. It's just kind of beating up in the center. Well, let's see if we can get some. Hold on, I'm gonna, it's probably just, let's just pull a little bit of that out. I'm going to kind of come in from the this side. It's definitely resisting a nice even coat. That's lovely because it's probably just been sitting around. Really? Need to start over on this one because it won't. Let's see if we can blend some of this. It's just that. You see how it's not sticking? I'm going to rinse that off. You know, it's beading up. See how it's beading like that? Irritating because I just wasted a lot of enamel. I'm going to get a little bit of Dawn dishwashing things to see if I can put a little bit of maybe a little clear fire on there. Let's let's just play around. Clear fire this. <clears throat> Big open spaces sometimes don't love. There we go. I'm just going to put a little clear fire here. There we go. And some Dawn. This will hopefully break up that surface tension that we're experiencing. If not, I don't know, I'll just throw in the towel and go get some green beer. No, I'm not gonna have any green beer. There we go, one tiny oop, dollop, like a little drop. We go over there. Now, let's get that. And hopefully things will go better. There we go. There's always, now, I'm gonna start in the center. That will know immediately if things are going better. Oh, I, I can tell already things are better. See how it's now allowing it to kinda of cling to the surface rather than beat up as one nonsense thing. That's perfect. So, now we'll go back to the go back to the beginning. I always look at other enamel artists that do really big open areas with no wires. 
and they're just perfect. And I'm always like, how did they get them so perfect? Because whenever I have a lot of big, oh, that's, that's the reason I do a ton of wires. <laughs> uh, it's, because that's my um, kryptonite is big open spaces. Perfect fields of color are challenging for me. There we go. So this should be a lot better. Now we're going to go a little with our elf. I do want to blend this a little bit. I'm going to make a circle, a donut, as it were. And I should make two of these. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We'll start with this, just one. Okay. I'm going to get all my colors, and then I'm going to... Are you opposed to creating an Enamel Jam Facebook group? Angie from Arizona says, you are welcome to create. Um, I, I'm not opposed to it. I know that I get that the Discord is a little old timey. Um, I just, my love affair with Facebook is, I feel like I'm slowly breaking up with Facebook but not opposed, I suppose, not thrilled. If somebody wants to create one and invite me, um, <laughs> I'll put a link to it. <laughs> How's that? You make it, I'll join it, and I will promote it. I am just it's a little bit of definitely a little too much water here. Green is just kind of permeating. That's fine. There we go. Now, let's see if we can do a little blending here. It's a strange shape, I know. how much blending I want. Let's get, let's get a little bit more green here. See how that looks. There we go. I think that I know it's not a perfect blend, but it doesn't have to be. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of this. I want to. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of water here and a little bit more yellow, a little bit more citrus. There we go. All right. There's one. I'm going to let that dry. We'll see how these end up in the kiln. You know, the, it's always a bit of a crapshoot when you've had a piece of a base or a silver piece. They've been in a plastic baggie, though, so I think they should be fine. But... We'll see. So I just have that. Let's look at the picture again. We kind of have 
these these eyes. Although, yeah, well, we'll, we'll probably I'm already changing those shades of blue for the rich for the real one, but we'll see how it works. I'm gonna go put this under the lamp, and we're gonna do the next one. Again, I have my kiln set to 1400, which is 760 Celsius. Uh, but we are going to be cranking it way down once we hit those opals. So just remember, um, when we hit the opalescence, we're going to turn it down a lot, a lot, a lot. So, all right, let's grab another one of these. And the next... I gotta see, I've already messed up my water. I'm gonna grab a fresh water. There we go. So this the next one that we're going to do the base will be this this one, which is yellows going into pinkish purples. So we've got, and I haven't used this yellow in a while, so we're gonna have to wash it. This is N26, Nino Mia medium yellow. It's a kind of a vivid, um, kind of a greenish. Although now I'm like, maybe, do I wanna go this green? Or do I wanna do yellow, yellow? I haven't second thoughts, but I've got both. That is, I don't even think, that's elf green. Which one is? Oh, that's this color right here. So look how pretty that sample is. That is a vivid, it's a very, where's my yellow? Eh, we'll give it a go. I kind of like, now that I'm looking at it, I kind of like the, the tinge of green. So I'm... You know, that's why we make it. So we've got a little bit of that. Oh. That was not an empty one. Good. It's fine. I've got, here's an empty one. And... What is this? N26? medium yellow there we go we don't need much and it's already been sifted it's kind of really pretty actually that'll be good so we've got that color we need n23 dark gold which we have right here that's good that's this i wonder if there's something in between we should try we'll find out and then we're going into the sun red which is here and here there and there and then we're going to end up at my trusty l95 dark rose so this is going to be it's a it's a big transition so and not a lot of room so we'll see how that works these circles are a little challenging and get the refuse cup pull it up actually we can zoom out there we go Should make two of each of these because I also want to see how I've got some of that chartreuse opal that might look interesting over there but this seems it's going to be challenging to go I might grab some light orange. Oh, look how dirty that is. Mm 
we'll just get these three and then because at some point I have to turn the kiln down this is a challenging color this rose can be a little bit how shall we say particular challenging and this to that yeah we'll give it a go I think we've got enough um, hold on I'm going to do the same thing remember we've got just to make sure that this is the the clear fire to give it a good coat and we'll start the dark rose zoom in now there we go I've made a mess oh hey Drew welcome happy St. Patrick's Day I don't think I've actually celebrated St. Patrick's Day well I'm not really Irish so it's much Irish I guess starting with this And then I was going to use my Aoki, but my Aoki red, which is a really vivid pinkish, a beautiful pink. But since most people can't find it, and most people can find the Nihon Chippo Sun Red G704, I decided to use that instead. But rest assured, yeah, and there's only a, a limited quantity of the sun red that I even have. Although I just got more of it, so I'm super stoked. Sorry, of the Aoki. Hot fuchsia pink. <laughs> I, Angie says, I'm not Irish either, but I celebrated every happy holiday oh good good ah well good and it's on a friday night so i imagine it'll be raucous raucous that's a that is a good word Although I didn't make corned beef last week. I made homemade corned beef <laughs> last week. And sauerkraut. But that was just, almost just by accident. Well, it was on sale, obviously, at the grocery store. So we've got this color. And I'm kind of going to go inward from there. We'll see how these, these are going to be, I'm going to see if I can feather this at all. Just a little bit of feathering. Hard to, to know what's going on with this color. Now this crazy orange wants to feather all the way around. This is an elaborate sample strip, sample, sample dot. see about feathering this I'm like should I do two coats of this and then a final I just so many different 
there's so many options. Here, we'll just gently do a small amount of feathering. I mean, I have an idea of what I'm going to do. And then finally, this. Well, we will. Drew's older brother's birthday. Happy St. Patrick Day. All right, let me pull this there. Let's see how this is going to look. All right. I'm going to put a little bit more. I know this looks so weird. I have a feeling it'll be a bit of like a bullseye when it comes out, but I don't do a ton of these circular. There we go. That's, you know what? Good enough. We're just trying to get the idea of what's going to happen. I'm just going to wick a little bit of that moisture. There we go. And I'm going to go put this under the lamp and then we'll do, I kind of want to do two more things. I'm going to do this purple and orange combo next. Interestingly, these are those purples. Remember these gorgeous, of course, I, I chose the purples that are, look at how gorgeous these are. They just glow, but they're also, oh, that's the shower. That's the wrong one, but uh, they are wildly, wildly reactive. So, cause I was like, while I'm fussing around with, you know, persnickety enamels, why not throw these into the mix? So we'll talk about those in a second. And I actually have to get the correct, I, this is an alternate for that other one, shower 6041 gray blue lump. I love it. Um, it's actually a vivid, I like that a lot. Well, maybe we'll switch back to that. We'll see. I'm gonna go put this under the lamp to dry. And we'll get one more under the belt and then fire them. And then see what is the what. Those are good. The what's up and the wherefores. All right, so we've got those are out of the way. So we've got those. And now this interesting, we're gonna do, oh, I want two. We've got those purples, get these out of the way. We've got Mikado, Mikado, Old Thompson 235, a very vivid orange. You could definitely use this is the most modern equivalent. This is N23 dark gold, but you can see how rich and luxurious this orange is compared to this one. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use this one going into this reddish purple, going into this other one. Do I have H? You'll have to find the, there's the version of this. Let me go grab that sample. And also, I'm thinking I need to put a base coat. It's going to have to be two coats on that one because of these. This is probably going to be the one that is the most, who knows what's going to happen. So let me get that. And also some baby blue. Where is the purple? Oh, here's that purple. Let's do, let's do baby, baby blue as the base under that because I don't feel like washing any flux. Just don't want to do it. Here's that. There's the color. And you can see they're actually fairly similar. These are, this is the, the gold but I was like in for a penny. Um, you can see there's just a little bit more luminosity in this one. So we've got kind of this to that to this. It's gonna be a crazy transition. 
and yeah I wonder if we should start with you know what we're going to do two cards we're going to actually start we're not because this one's also reactive not quite as terribly reactive as these but since they're three reactives we're going to set them and I'm going to do a little base coat of this orange going into a baby blue that's what's going to happen and so this is going to be a three-parter so we've got this we've got that I'm just going to make it work all right let's grab another eyeball or whatever they're called here's a clean one there we go and we've got a little bit of this clear fire that seems to be doing the trick just like that and I'm just this one will go nice and fast since it's two colors I wonder if I should do baby yellow <laughs> ha 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 yes 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 let me grab the baby yellow baby there's not much left but there should be just enough to start Baby yellow. We're just going to do, it's going to be one third of the orange, two thirds of the purples. So keep that in mind. Just going to do a nice coat. Yeah, I say that and then I started going more, more, more. And then this nice blue. Hopefully this will be a good enough barrier. And then we run the risk, I guess, of just running out of room for the opalescent. What you gonna do? Just putting this nice. I'm not going to be taking this to total completion. So I'm not going to be, as I say that, I'm not going to be grinding and polishing those, these. I'm just going to see. So I can kind of build them up more than I need to if I, if I so choose. So I'm just having a nice barrier. One more. We'll let this dry, and then I'm going to put those three in the kiln. There we go. Nice, even coat. That's perfect. It is kind of nice to like have ready-made blanks to try things out. I almost, when I made these extra ones a hundred years ago, tossed them in the scrap heap, you know, just to, you know, the refining heap. But then I was like, you know, maybe I'll want to make these again. So we've got that one. I'm going to go put these with the other three. We're going to get the fourth one done, but while, because this one wants a moment to dry. So. Let's. Do those you guys just hang out hang out hang out and then the other thing that I want to test so we've done the three we've done the three main colors for the interior of the eyeballs I'd like to try out this one as well because I want to see how this opal hunter green looks over it and I wouldn't say no to trying out this color combo as well because this I've picked the sunset this is this color right here this is a Hirasawa color S110 sunset and it's gorgeous 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 I 
find it is so, uh, it turns livery. I, you know what, I don't even know if I can say that, like, it looks gorgeous for the first two to three firings, but then it just starts getting this kind of gross, all I can call it is like a livery. It's kind of a, a phlegmy look to it and not an attractive phlegmy look. So, but I'm giving it another chance because other people have gotten great results from it. And it's so, it's such an unusual shade. I think it, anyway, I'm gonna give it a go. So that's, I'm gonna play with this one too. This is also wildly reactive. I'm picking all these crazy colors that I never use. This is Milton Bridge 212 Light Amber because I think it looks interesting. And then Mikado will be in the middle there. Is this word? Oh yeah, so where that's gonna be on the outside here. And then our lump, our elf, our N26, this, and then probably why not a little bit of darker. So we've got, this is gonna be though. So we're gonna do these two and then that takes up the fifth one. So we've got two more of these. So that's what we're gonna do. And they're such attractive color combinations. I could quite literally just eat them. Nom nom, like nom 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 nom, yum. I gotta get a plus. Let me get a little cup to put my, I'm starting to collect these and then dust gets everywhere. So I like to get a little cup to put these in to collect them. So this one, no problem. This one, another big problem. I'm gonna put a layer of yellow down. There we are. So this one's just going to get First, a coat of the clear fire just to keep things nice and tidy. You know what? I could probably sift a coat of yellow on here, but because it's just going to be that. But I'm going to wet pack it. Hopefully, I have enough. I really wish I remembered what flux was on here. I bet if I go get one of the other samples that I made with these. It might be on there. So I'm just gonna put one coat of this down using the last little bit of it. I see a dollop, a little bit of water. We'll get, cause yes, these are reactive, especially this one, but I love the warmth of this yellow. It's very nice. There we go. All right, that's a pretty even coat. That'll do. And then this one we've got our this color. We've got our elf. Wait, that's not citrus. We're doing yellow. And honestly, I think Where's our green? Oh, and then our chartreuse. Although it seems like they're almost the same color. In the sample strip, it looks a lot darker. Sample strips can be a little bit deceiving. Like you go a little extra thick with one color and a little light with the other. And then all of a sudden you think there's a big difference between them. But then you hold them up and you're like, this one actually seems a little darker. So, I'm gonna grab N42, be right back. There we go. In the drawing, I'm using shades of gray. This is gonna play a big role in the actual finished piece. But with this, I'm just going to, I want to see the vivid colors. I deal with the shades of gray later. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna get these down and then we'll fire them. So we're going a little bit darker, but I think it'll be fine. We're gonna do elf, doop, doop, doop. Get that out of the way. And where did I put, are we having a fun play date? This is just Friday play date. So 
That's, that's what I told myself when I was walking to the studio. I've walked, ugh, I don't live far from my studio. And so I, and it was a gorgeous morning. I strolled all the way down here, beautiful. And I realized that I'd forgotten my printouts. So I was like, hmm, great. So I walk all the way home, I get my printouts. I come back here and I'm setting this. I'm like, I'm just gonna get everything for the streaming set up. And I had forgotten my plug in my cord for the, the cable for the laptop. So I can walk. I've walked there and back twice already today. So I've gotten all of my steps in. Do I want to start? I liked coming from the inside there. We're going to start with here. So I can say that I've got all my steps already. And I have officially done, I haven't officially, usually I go for a walk to get my steps, but I'm going to get extra, extra steps. I'm just doing a little bit right around this edge here. And going into the elf. Oh, I should have used shamrock green. I have shamrock green. Gorgeous, gorgeous shamrock green. It's a bit... Oh, I, I didn't see, I didn't paint the, that's why I'm at having all this trouble. I didn't put any of this clarifier down, so I'm getting a little bit of beading. I'm gonna just mix that in. There we go. That should fix things. But yeah, no, shamrock, oh, love, I'm in love with this color. Shamrock green, it's an old Thompson. It's, it's a very cool, um, it has an opalescent quality to it, but it's not an opalescent. It almost, you know, to be honest, if I told you it was opalescent, you would believe it. It has just this really pretty quality. You know, I'm just, you know what? I'm not gonna borrow trouble from the future. There, we'll just deal with it when we get there. There we go. A little bit of that. Now let's get to the vivid yellow. And the thing about samples, even though, you know, I want them to look gorgeous, um, obviously we want success. You have to prepare yourself for results. You know, the results are the results. <laughs> Am I trying to set you guys up? I'm trying to manage your expectations. Um, if these don't end up gorgeous, it's information that we have and I will make some changes. There we go. I think that's a nice one. Nice blending. There we go. So we're going to dry these right around the edge so we don't mess up. There we go. That one's probably pretty dry. It's good. I'm going to put these on. Let me go get our other things. We've got are three, these are gonna go in. I know you can't see them. I'm gonna bring them to you here. Let me not reach under. I feel like they're a little wobbly. All right, we've got these are ready to go in to the kiln and these are going to dry. So remember we've got, see how these end up. So I'm gonna put these in. I've got the kiln set at 1400, which is 760 Celsius. And I'm gonna put these, let me, let me get these in the kiln first. I actually do have the kiln camera 
the kiln cam set up. There it is, there it is. Let's go and put these babies in the kiln. And while they're in the kiln, we'll get the other dry. Here we are. Oh, yes, we'll get this out of the way. This is the project from yesterday. So 1400, 760. go and let me go grab those two and put them under let me get two of these little guys And I bet by the time these come out, about two minutes, one minute, one and a half minutes, um, we will, all right, we're just going to step away. I'm gonna find my water and have a sip. There we go. And again, generally, you can see it's dropped to 1297, 1300. Probably by the time it hits 1400, it will be done. Although that yellow is a little hard, but I bet it'll still be done because they're small. They're tiny little guys. Hopefully nothing weird will happen if something weird happens. We'll deal with it. Nothing, nothing untoward looks to be happening in there, but you never know. You never know. Oh, 1400. Let's have a look. Uh, I say nothing weird is happening, but we're going to give it another minute. 10 seconds, not a minute. I like to count out the seconds. All right, there we go. I want it to be nice and smooth. A nice, smooth base. We're just gonna set those, and you know what? Let's go ahead and put the other two in. I bet they're ready. Maybe they're a little wet, that's fine. Get these in there. And just, let's pull these off. Hey, look. Interesting, interesting. Hmm. Interesting. While those other ones here, we can have a look. Oops, oh, hold on, I'm stuck. There we go, oops. There we go, here they are. You can see they are fine. Fine, a good, a good start. This one's a little strange, but I'm liking, you know, I'm liking what I'm seeing, whatever. Am I liking it? I am actually a little bit more neutral about it, but it's all good. So we'll let those, oops, there we go. 13.33, got a couple more minutes. Let me pull them off. I'm gonna to wanna to put another coat to soften it a bit. What's happening in here?
All right. Well, one of those is yellow, so it definitely wants a little extra. Probably I'm going to do 10 more seconds. Hmm. All right. We'll let these do come to whatever. I bet these are ready to go. All right. We're going to go back to the other camera. Here we are, workbench. Here we are. Let's have a look at what we have. We're getting there. Okay, this is from that. And we've got a nice transition here, which I'm liking. Let's look at the picture. Where did I put the picture? We've got, this is, are these colors right here. I'm going to do another coat. I'm going to do another coat of color because I want more intensity of the base color because that is important as well. So that's this color right here. I want, I might pull in the yellow yellow. Um, I think it's good fine. And then this one, obviously we're going to put our first coat of that, those colors in. Wait, nothing's in the kiln. Hey, nothing's Nothing is in the kiln, so we'll start it. We'll do them in the same order and let me go pull those off the trivets as well so they cool down. And oh, lovely. You can never go wrong with greens, 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 greens. I'm going to just pull you guys so I can bring I haven't actually touched these, but here we have the greens are looking lovely. Huh. Mm. Still a little warm. So we'll get these colors on next. Seeing what is what. So we've got this one was these colors. I have to keep reminding myself, where's our chartreuse? Chartreuse. And, you know, I want to grab a vivid yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of intensity right in the middle there, just to make it pop a little bit more. Let's see yellow. Here it is. We've got just enough, I think. Got just enough of this vivid yellow. I think we'll be good. Yeah, I think I want a little bit more darker. I think we're going to do that. Now, let's see. Do I need to see how it's all beading up? It's just the way of it. So I'm going to put a coat of the clear fire down just to make everything stickable. And I'm going to do a little bit. We'll get to, we are going to eventually get to the opals here. This is just part of the process. Start. Here, like that. And I kind of want to go a little darker if I have enough of that. I want more of this blue. Nice. 
and it's water. There we go. And then I want my green. A little bit of that. I think this is going to just really pump up. And I'll write down exactly what I did because I won't remember next week when I'm making the actual video for the tutorial. I'm just kind of feathering that in and a little bit of this. Good. Carefully wick some of that moisture out. There we go. Put that over there. What's next? Boom. Pinks, pinks. This, this one, which is all about this. Let's get these out of the way and pull these back. A little bit of this, this sun. What else? Oh yes, dark gold, medium yellow. We've got this. So we'll start, I wanna soften you can see we have a bit of a line where the orange and the sun. So we're gonna see if we can soften that a little bit, but also gonna start, oh, I'm gonna put a little bit of the, little bit of this down. A little bit. even switch up to the Mikado, which I need to make. Because we're going to want Mikado in the other one. Mikado. Ground from lump. Mm, refreshing. Just a little bit. It's probably enough. This is this color. You can tell it's made of gold because it looks white. It looks white. Pour some of that out. I don't think I'm gonna, <laughs> I've already decided I don't think I'm gonna port this video to YouTube. It's not my most exciting and engaging content ever. So, let's see. There we 
we go. There's our Mikado. And we've got our sun. Red, we'll do a little bit of that. There we go. Gonna make it. It's hard to blend these colors that look so different. I'm gonna put a big drop of water in. There we go. Just It's fine. And now let's get that Mikado. Here is that. It's going to be a little bit, hopefully, richer. Was I supposed to go to? I haven't even looked at the drawing. And then we're going to go right to a vivid. I'm going to switch to the vivid yellow. See if that, what is that little dot? Hold on, I got a dot of something. Here you go. There's our Mikado orange, and then I'm going to switch it up to our vivid, vivid, just bright yellow. We got a, just enough to make that happen, I think. There's probably going to be some editing of the. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do a, a kit for this particular one just because there's a lot of. Variations in color that you could do. There we go. Let that dry. So we've got this little guy. He's going to hang out over there. I'm going to take these two guys and go put them under the, la the lamp. Those look pretty good. What is next? Ah, oh, yes, this crazy one. This is going to be the crazy Mikado orange to weird, weird ass purple. So let's just move these out of the way. Mikado orange to crazy purple. We'll see. Honestly, if we can get this to work probably wouldn't even bother putting anything over it. So let's grab our purples. We've got, this is our H2B, the bluish purple. Get that a little washed. Hopefully there's enough here. Enough, and then the last thing is I need to get. Oh, hold on. Where is the? Oh, gold, red, violet. Huh. Oh, I was looking for it earlier, and then I lost my way, and I never went back to it. I hope I actually have it in stock. Gold. H twenty eight A. Feel like it would be in purples warm would you call that a warm purple yes oh here it is I said oh I don't think I have it and it's literally right there I wonder if I have any sifted though is that too much to ask the universe oh lol all right universe you win this round so get one more cup Last little bit. H twenty eight A gold red 
violet. Honestly, I should probably put this. This is such a pretty sample. Pretty, pretty. Let's get a little bit of that. The trick with this one is it's wildly, actually, it's wildly reactive and it doesn't like heat and it also doesn't want to be fired more than four times, four or five times. If you follow those simple, simple rules, it'll be just, it'll be like a walk in the park. So many rules. So we've got the red, we've got the blue, we've already done that, that's good, and then the Mikado. So it's going to be an interesting blend. This is not my favorite kind of blend because it's going to be hard to blend those colors and make them look good, especially. But Friday is a challenge. Put a little bit of this right there. And are we going like this? Hold on. I've already forgotten. Looks like it's going into the blue and then the purple. Interesting. All right. I can, I'm just following orders here. All right, so Mikado. So this is going to go around the edge. We'll get that to down first and nice hopefully I washed enough of it zoom in a little bit good enough probably will react a little bit to this edge I don't know I did a quick in my last workshop with Anita I made a little thing with these colors, and I haven't ground and polished it yet, but they came out really nice. I wonder where I put it. I'm going to grab it. I've got some grinding and polishing to finish up. That's the red. That's the red. That's the red. I'm getting can, getting a little confused. I'm gonna do the blue. Just a little bit. It's gonna probably be two coats of this. This is gonna be extra thick. Good. Now let's get that Mikado here. Sticky right in the middle there. Mikado is definitely the best orange in the world. Well, I guess there's lots of different. If you're going with the most beautiful, I would say yes. But if you're going to go with the easiest to use and most beautiful, I would say N23, this one, would be the most versatile and beautiful orange in the world, Nino Mia. And I'm just going to see about 
feathering these two very discordant colors together. But it's a dragon eye, you know, things happen. They don't have to be a perfect blend. Just going to gently feather it in like that. All right. There is that. We'll see how that looks. I'm going to go put this under the heat lamp. What are we still at? 1400? I think that's all right for these. You guys, do your thing under the lamp. Now, finally, we got our two little other guys. We've got our pretty, this guy, and we've just got that, because what's happening here? This one will start because it's the easiest. You know, I'm just doing two coats. Actually, I'm glad I chose to, to go dark with this one. So we're going to do one more coat of all of that on here just because it's pretty intense, but do you remember, did I do yellow or did I do 26? 26 is what I did. Here's 26. So let's get that out of there. I know it's getting to be a bit of a mess over here. A little bit of that. This is a pretty intense color, but let's make it more intense. Can it be more intense? Yes, there's our elf. We'll start. These, this particular, I love, this is, I love this color combination and throughout my entire life I've loved this color combination. I remember in middle school I used to do these dragon illustrations. I had this set of markers and I just it was like this I made these really elaborate illustrations of dragons all in these shades of kind of a chartreuse green. It was very popular in the D&D community in seventh grade. There we go. My lifetime love of this color combo. There we go. And dragons. I have not done a dragon in a while. I think it is time. I wonder. I'm just gonna do that. Honestly, these are nice little samples just to get, you know, color blending skills. Oh my gosh, I should totally make, I'm not going to make a, a Vimeo about it, but I might. It would be a good way to get good at blending and pick good blending color combos. A little bit of this. So vivid. I'm kind of blending as I go. Be good. Perfect. All right. 
right. That one is ready to find a trivet. Here we go. Set you over there. And then our final little guy, what is going on here is, oh yeah, our oranges, sunset, Mikado, and light amber. Sunset, crazy sunset, Mikado, I'm going to have to wash a little bit more. I see that I should have washed more. Sunset, Mikado, light, amber. We need to get a little bit of that going. That is 212. This is Milton Bridge. Every time I say that, I think Milton Bradley, like the game. Milton Bradley, light amber. Light. What color? Yeah, and this is another one of those. It's going to end up being this color, I promise. Or we hope. You never promise. It says it's sifted, but I'm going to say it gently sifted. It looks a bit milky to me. See, look at all that. Very important to get rid of that. Oops, I just... broke that pipette. Getting closer. There we go. All right, so let's take a moment and think about what is happening with this one. We've got, all right, those are going up over there. Sunset, we don't want a green. Sunset, oh, hold on. Oh, sunsets. Oh, look at that. Let's see, do we have any fresh sunsets? See, that's, yeah, it's re resisting the water. It's not a good sign. Let's see if we can make it work. We don't need that much. Hold on, let me see. Sunset. Do you think that would be yellow, pink? Sunset. Red. Red, red, red. Sunset. Let's grab some fresh because this is not going to be good. See, they let you know when they are done. So we'll put that in the garbage. I, and granted, I've had, that's been in that little container for a long time. So I guess color me unsurprised. But getting some fresh is never a bad idea. Sunset S10. It's sifted. It'll just be the work of a moment. Now, much better. All right, so we've got Sunset, Mikado, and Light Amber. 
this is a challenge because the lighter one is darker, but that's fine. We just have to use our noggin with this. Sunsets around the edge. There's two coats on here, so that's fine. After I get this coat on, we gotta fire everything. Then we will actually get to the final couple coats or two of all this work just, just to see if it's gonna be fucked up. Oh, sorry, if it's going to be successful or not. You can also just get a little scrap and, and test it like that as well, but you know me. I'd like to overdo things. All right, there's our sunset. Now, our Mikado. Oh, I didn't put, did I? A little bit of this. There we go. Our Mikado. Just be. not to get the sunset into the Mikado. Okay, now our final one, this one. It's such a strange color, 212. Yeah, okay. Put a big dollop right there. This is gonna be... All right, there we go. See how that looks. Let me wick that. All right, I'm gonna grab these two. Now, let's go put those three in. We'll put these under the lamp to dry. Let's switch over to the kiln cam because are. Now, let's grab one of those. Let's see how these turn out. There, buddy. All right, now you guys are chilling out. I'm gonna put, make sure you guys get a little extra light. Make sure you're super. All right, about a minute and a half, everybody.
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm feeling, all of a sudden, I'm not feeling very talkative. I have this, the one o'clock slumps. There we are, a couple more minutes, 10 seconds. Sounds like a good idea. Boom. There we go. It's like interesting. Get you guys out of the way. All right. You're not, probably not totally dry, but I'll just just to move things along, get you guys in. There we go. Got that. What's interesting? Interesting. Ooh, interesting. Here, let's come, let's come on over. Let's have a look. Oops. Let's see if we can pivot. There we go. Looking interesting. All right, I'm going to find that other piece that I made during that class. Where on earth would I have put it? Oh, there it is. Oh, we'll look at that in a second. All right, as soon as we pull that other one out here, I'll show you this one. Wait, where is it? Oop. Oh, here's this piece that I made. It's not been ground and polished, but it ha it's using those same two purples and the oranges. I'm so, I'm very excited about these oranges and purples. It's kind of I love how vivid they are. All right, so we've got that. I bet this is about ready to come out. Let's pull back a little bit. Whoop, back. There we go. Pull back. All right, a couple more minutes. And you know what I mean. Ooh, the sun just came out. Nice. All right, oh, these are gonna be yeah, considering there's no texture under these, they actually look pretty good. I mean, imagine a really vivid, a pretty texture, a little bit of foil, you know, a lot of, a little bling. All right. Oh, I bet these are done. Here we are. All right, you guys hang out over there. See what's happening with them. I'm interested to see how those colors came out. Hard to know. Give it to me. There we go. You guys chill out. Are you guys cool? I can't tell. Yes. 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 All right. Let's go back. Now. Let's see, workbench, there we are. Here are these, they're looking good. Those other two are cooling. And so now let's, let's look at them in comparison to our eyeballs. We've got that one. This one I feel wants another coat of the orange and the purple. Came out pretty nice. This is looking good. I might, yeah, actually I like that. I like the darker blue. I might actually skip the 546 blue altogether and go to forget me not and then maybe even a slightly darker color I think would be fine. But for this is good. So I will be taking notes. So you can kind of see that. Let's go grab those other two. I'm not, since here's a thing. 
because once we start, I gotta cool down the kiln to 1300 when we start doing the opalescence. So I don't wanna have to keep, the kiln does not like going up and down. So if there's any other coats that need to get put on, I need to do that before we start. So we're gonna see what's going on with these other two samples that just came out. Maybe they are cool. Maybe they, ooh, interesting. Certainly interesting. Pull them over. Yeah, I have them on the thing because I'm not sure that they're all that. There's those two. Let me put that over there. Let's see if they're, are they still hot? Yes, <laughs> they're still a little hot. But remember this one, supposed to match this guy down here and this one will be the skin here I want a little bit more luxurious color I'm gonna put one coat of this vivid this this lightest color here over the whole thing this one's done for now so to be honest these two this purple one, I'm gonna do one more coat. This one, one more coat. And then I promise we'll get to the, I'll get, we'll get to the thing. But that's, that's a pretty color. This is an interesting color. That's the Sunset Mikado and the Light Amber. All right, so we're just gonna be doing these two for now, one more coat of each of them. What is what? We'll start with this one, which I'm gonna do, see actually see the sunset, it's just so deceptive because it looks great. I mean, it's like chef's kiss for the first two to three fire ends and then all of a sudden, gross, disgusting. What did you bring me? situation let me where to put my there we are so but that being said that's why we're doing these we're going to continue this color i want it to be a little bit more luxurious and intense and then probably just these two and skipping that for now so let's get a little bit of this down And I'm just gonna do a lot of this. I know we're getting towards the top, but I'm gonna go probably over the top a little bit just because I wanna know how many coats it takes to get a good effect. And if I need to make my bases or my wires taller, that's what I gotta do. So we got that there and then I'm going to put the Mikado not much left of that Mikado around the edge just to warm it up a bit definitely before I go home today I'm going to write down because I won't remember tomorrow what I did today. So write down everything I did in each layer and at least make a sticker to put on the back of these so at least I know what colors are on here. A little bit of that. Boy, I'm almost out of this Mikado, but I don't feel like you think I can get the rest of it scooped up. Oh, I need it for the other color, don't I? Yes. All right, I need it for the other color anyway. Get a little bit, that should do. Give it a little wash.
one more. Get you out of the way. A little bit fill in right there. That's good. Wick a little bit. moisture there we go all right so that's good and then this little guy Mikado in the center it's looking good Mikado oh hold on mm. a little bit there we go Mikado in the center Hard and you have to make sure. I think I might have gotten some of that orange. I want to make sure it's not creeping out. And then we've got our crazy purples. They almost, when they're together, have an iridescent quality to them. So we're going to do, we're going to work our way around like that. And we'll feather this later. There we go. Now let's get that reddish one, which is this, the more interest. This is the more interesting color. Around the edge. There's no feather in this particular. It's just, it is what it is. So. While these are drying. There we go. I'm going to go put these under the heat lamp. Oh, hey, Margaret. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're just doing samples of some interesting colors. We're about to throw some of these uh, opalescence over these vivid colors to see if they look glorious th th or like trash. That is the the tagline. Will it be glory or flames going down in flames? There we go. We've got that. Oh yeah, let's pull this. I fucking love this color. Yeah, I just... I cannot get enough of this color combo. I know it's super garish and a little bit circusy, but um, just love these yellows with these purples. I'm in love with them. So, and this is never. This is just for the class. It's not even for sale. All right. So, while that is drying, we can move along. We've got all our bases. Remember, we've got these little guys and we're going to honestly just see what happens when we put some opalescent over these. I, I have a lot of trepidation, not gonna lie. Let me just get some of these and you know, What we're gonna? What are we gonna do? Except the only way out is through the the obstacle is the path forward. What else? What else is there to say? <laughs> okay, let's get it. We're gonna start 
we're going to, this is T8 opal, and we're going to put T8 opal over, oh gosh, let's look at our picture. We're going to do T8 opal over this one just to see how it looks. This one. This one we're going to do the gold over. I don't even have that. We're going to do that one and then let's put T8. Oh, this is the one with the hunter green opal. Hunter green opal over that. And this one's going to be T8. So we're going to do T8 on those. Hunter green opal over that. And should look interesting. Here is the actual sample. I don't know if you can see the opalescent over it. So we'll see. And then we've got the gold, which is going to go over the thing. All right, we're ready. Now we'll start with T8. I like to get fresh and you don't need to do a big wash because although, you know, I'm going to do a big wash. I say that and then I'm like, I am going to do a big wash because I don't want it to get too milky white. So big wash it is. I'd rather a little less opaly and a little bit or more opal, less white because that's This stuff is so powdery. What is like ground to, it seems like 300 grit. It's very, very, and I'm gonna get some fresh water because our water is looking a bit crusty. So I'm gonna grab some fresh. There we go. So, Actually, you know what's a good time? I bet our things are, let's go ahead and put those last two things in the kiln to fire them because we're gonna need a little bit of time. If we're gonna drop the kiln from 1400 Fahrenheit, 760 Celsius to 1300, it's gonna need a little bit of time to cool down. So let's fire those so we can turn the kiln off to cool down. So let's go to the, we're just all over the place kiln cam. Again, it's still set to 1400, 760 Celsius. Again, there's two little puppies in. Beautiful, just hanging out. Oh, and while that's in there, I'm gonna grab those other two, those other samples that I made. That, that one's nice, this one's nice. Not so nice. Yeah. Where are we at? Oh, we got a little bit of ways to go. Not much is going on in there, which is good. I mean, if you see something strange in the kiln, it's usually not a good sign. You 
You want the inside of your kiln to be like Ohio. Flat, steady, level. Nothing much ever happens. And that's a good thing. There we go. All right, beautiful. Now I'm just gonna turn this off because I'm gonna let it cool. And I could open the door to let out a little heat. I guess I could do that. But it's, there's a lot of heat built up in it. So we'll just let it do its thing. And it's gonna, I'm gonna let it drop down to about 900, honestly, before I turn it back on, or maybe 1,000. So, ooh, those look pretty. I almost hate putting anything over them. They look so pretty. This purple, yum. Oh, I love that. Okay, so the moment of truth. The moment of truth. Let's go to the workbench. Hey. So <clears throat> I brought these over. So you can see, here's the originals that I made. I made a bunch of these. These are just three that I chose. Um, and you can see this one is, oh, I guess it's G110 Flux. Mm, all right. Previous sander, interesting choice. This is a T8, T8, and T8 over different colors. And you can see it definitely is really pretty, but you can also see that, you know, you get a little bit of this milkiness over these different colors. But man, are these really pretty. I like this one. It looks like, this looks like it's over gold foil, is it? No, it's beige opal. Interesting, and T8. Interesting. So that's, that's what I have. So we're going to be putting a similar thing over these really dark colors and that is, that's what's gonna happen. So, me, I mean, I'm gonna grab a couple of trivets as well. We'll see how it works, honestly. And honestly, it'll give me like the whole weekend if it looks like trash to come up with a plan for what's gonna happen with the Vimeo tutorial. So, I know. Exciting. So we got a nice clean water. We're gonna start with the T8. Let me grab a little bit of that hunter green while I'm while I'm washing. Let me get these trivets out of the way. Oh, just put that anywhere. All right. I it's just a mess. There's there's a lot going on. It looks so tidy right here. It's like, but then there's all this other stuff. It's like, ugh, stuff everywhere. So T8 which is a blithe color, blithe, T8 opal white from enamelartsupply.com. Get you some. We've got that. We've got hunter green. This is an old Thompson enamel. This is all I have. That's why I'm not making a kit for this project because I don't have enough to share. Uh, when this is gone, I don't know that I'm gonna get more. So that is gonna be interesting to see. And, oh, and then we've got our gold beige. Another, I've got, actually I do have a ton of this, but um, this is opal beige. This is also an old Thompson enamel. So that's, that is it. So we need to, we actually need one more cup then, I forgot. While those other pieces are cooling, we're going to get this washed and I am washing these a little bit because I don't want them to be too uh, semi-opaque. I'd rather have them be a little bit clearer if that is a thing. 849 Opal Hunter. And what's the other one? 852 Opal Beige. going to be over 
there. Let's get the hunter green. That's probably just enough. And some of the opal beige. I wish I had this in lump form. I'm all about the lump. That's probably enough. Boop. And we're gonna do a quick little wash. God, look at that. Remember that here's our gross water. That's floating on top is the um, that sunset that had gone bad. It was let me actually dump some of that out so I can do a quick wash. There we go. Now, got some clean water over here. Let's zoom out a little bit. We're gonna start with the T8. And normally, especially if you're going over a white, I would not do a ton of washing, but I do want, because. You can wash away the, the opalescence. So I really don't want to do that. So I'm just going to just a little mini wash. I want to make sure that there's so little, it's so finely ground, this T8, that I actually think I might be pouring more of it away than I'm keeping in the washing. So there's that, whatever it is. And then this, just a little bit, just a little. One more, I'm gonna do one more little mini. There we go. See, I'm not washing it all the way, just a little, well, maybe one more, one more. Two more. I do what I want, there we go. And then, same goes here. There we go. All right, so we've got those things. That is good. Let me go grab those other two pieces. We'll have all five and we'll get our top coats on and we'll see what is what. Let's see what the temperature is of the kiln. We're still at 11.43. I'm gonna give it another moment. Ooh, oh, pretty. Oh, I almost don't wanna put anything over these two. They look so pretty. Look at these. Look at them. Let me zoom in a little bit, wrong way. Here we are. These are stuck. That's now that's a nice that's a nice shade of orange. We've got that. Very pretty. I think they look similar to we've got our eyeball sample there. This is gonna be the his skin. So there's that one. This is his skin. We're gonna put that over. This is his eyeball. Oops, sorry. There we go. And then this one is whatever. I didn't do skin for him. We only had five, so. All right, and I've already forgotten what we're doing. Sorry. I am tired of, all right, this one's getting T8, and this one's getting T8. And these, this one, God, I wanna see what T8 looks like over this. I'm gonna do T8 over this. And then this one's gonna get the gold, and then this one is gonna get the hunter. Boom. And I'm looking at the kiln, we're down to 1100. I'm gonna set the kiln for, I'm actually, I know I said 1300. I'm gonna set it for 1295, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because my kiln tends to really, especially when it's been on all day like it is now, it's really retained the heat, tends to really, when it hits the temperature again, it keeps going up and up and up, and I don't ever want it to go over 
say 1320 or else we get cloudiness and milkiness which we don't want especially over these dark glorious I just remember how beautiful these colors are um, so I'm gonna set it to 1295 and so what is that 700 Celsius is I think what that is and we're at 1083 yeah I think I'm gonna do it right now because it'll give it a moment to kind of get equilibrium I'm gonna go do that then we'll get these on here. All right, one, two, all right, 14 to 1300, 1295 is what I said, 700. Twelve. Oh, not 75, Oop. sorry, lots of beeping. 12.95, start, yes, yes, yes. Sometimes the kiln doesn't like to do all these different temperature changes. It gets a little squawky. We have a, you know, a fraught relationship, but it's loving, it's very loving. All right, so T8. I probably should have washed some more, it's fine. Make sure there's nothing in my, I don't want any of those. Making sure my brush is nice and clean. So we'll start, it doesn't matter where we start. And I kind of want it right around here. In reality, I would just put the T8 around the center part so it really glows. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to decide in a second. I'll tell you in 35 seconds. Crap. Sorry, my language. I forgot to put the... Ugh, I hate that I just wasted that. Try again. <laughs> Sorry about my language. Oh, all right. Now, a little bit of... There we go. I see a dot I'm gonna get rid of. Nice even coat. Yeah, I think I'm gonna blend it into the blue. Oh, should, no, no, turquoise? Dare I? No. I think I'm gonna blend into the blue. Which would be, I'm gonna blend it into 546 blue. Ideally, probably two coats, but we'll see. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we are. We are up to temperature. Let this dry. Put you on a little trivet. And then this sweet, look at that orange. Mm. It's hard to get this really vivid orange. But that's a nice one. 
I'm gonna write down, I'm gonna definitely write down those colors. So, T8, T8 over the middle part, and then probably yellow, T8, because I really want it to glow. Oh, I did this again. I keep forgetting to put Wait. There we go. Now, there we go. Now the T8. Trying to make it nice and such a strange. There we go. And I'm going to have to get a little bit more of that. I'm going to do a little bit of yellow. Does it really matter? Not that yellow. Let's do some of this light amber. Why not? Oh, yes. Around the edge. Just I'm trying to double check. These almost look identical. <laughs> so, all right, a little light amber around the end. Who knows? Okay, I know, buddy. A little bit. tell you right now that my enamel RJAM project is not going to have any opalescence. I'm going to give myself permission to not use any, any of that. But there might be glow-in-the-dark enamels in that. Ugh. There might be. But that's pretty gimmicky, but I don't care. We'll see. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put this on a trivet. And then our final, honestly, should we just fire those and see how they look? Should we do one at a time? Nah, let's just dive on in. Why? Why not? Let's do the T8 over there. See how milky this looks. T8 just over here. It's like I. All right. Let's get a little bit more T8. Hopefully this will be the last little bit. A little bit of washing. Try not to, it's so finely ground, inexplicably.
just going to do a mini, mini, mini wash. And I'm going to grab some pink as well. There we go. So, we'll see how this all looks. Mm, hold on. Put a little clear fire down so I get some stickage. There we go. And you know, I might get some pale pink just to put around the edge there. Pale pink it is. Baby. Pink. Why not? And the other question is, should I do them more? <laughs> I'm just going to do them all at once. And then we can have a cry together, move on. There we go. Now, let me just blot that. Go put these under the heat lamp. We're gonna let these dry really well. And then we will see what happens. Let's get one more trivet. Here we go. All right, these are all gonna go hang out and dry. They all have the T8 opalescence. Now, what is happening? What is next? We've got these two. I'm going to do the hunter green, although I almost want to do the yellow over that. Yes. I know I said hunter green, but now I want to do the yellow, but that's fine. We'll do hunter green. I promise hunter green. I'm going to just do it. That's nice and easy. Let me get one more little wash. At least I remembered to put that on. We're going to just throw this over the whole thing. Oh, you know what I... Mm -mm -mm. I know, I know, I know, I said I did. I'm gonna grab some of that opal yellow, even though it went a little bit. Let me get it, let me get it, yellow. Opal, chartreuse, opal. We're gonna do a little chartreuse opal. Let me grab that sample, I know. You're sick of the hemming and hawing, but let me show you how lovely, when it, when it is lovely, here's that chartreuse opal, and uh, below it is the other green that we're using. So you can see when it goes well, when things go well, it's just amazing. But when things don't go well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do both two shades of chartreuse here because I'm just that extra. All 
Alrighty, last. And yes, I'm washing them. I know it. <laughs> there we go. There we go, there we go. So, two shades of chartreuse, doing it here. It's because I love this intense yellow. Oh, of course, there's a dot. And then we'll go down to here. That'll do. Two shades of opalescent. Hang out over there. And then this one doing the golden I'm gonna throw this color over it just to see but just over the orange and then we'll just throw what are we gonna throw over it probably pink why not why not pink so we've got our opal beige here so close so if this doesn't work out Again, with the, I don't know why I'm feeling so negative. I have to be more positive. I think what it is is, I think, quite honestly, I love these colors so much. I don't even know that they need opals. So maybe that's my, in my internal dialogue. But I've promised opals, so we're, by golly, we're going to put opals. There we go. There's a lot of internal dialogue. There we go. Right? Just over here. A little bit of that. Good. And then, why not pink? Why not pink over this purple? Notice I haven't used any flux. <laughs> no flux, no flux. Especially over these dark colors. All right. One way or the other, we're gonna put these in the kiln. Let me just dry this. All right, let's go to the kiln cam. Back to you at the kiln cam. There we go. Don't need that, we've made a mess. Let's see how this play date has come out. All right, I'm gonna put these, are gonna dry. Let's put these in the kiln. I'm gonna do them all at once, just because we all sink or swim together. Hold on, let's let, 
I can hear the sirens. Let's let them pass and then we'll continue along. I'm gonna go put these under and then we'll switch to the kiln cam. I guess we'll switch to the kiln cam right now. Wow. All right, so you can see 1292, perfect. That is what, 700 Celsius. And we don't want them to go over 1320 or 716. That's, that is the, the situation. So let's do it. There it is, let the magic begin. So we dropped, that's fine. I'm going to have a little relaxation over here, but I'm not wandering off too far. But you can see how much darker, I guess we could come in a little, come in a little bit more. You can see how much darker the kiln is because the temperature, see how it's a much darker orange on the inside here. I'm looking at this color, not the blue. <laughs> um, that is because the temperature is lower. It's cooler. And as the temperature gets hotter, that glowy part right there will be more yellow. There's some science back behind that, but you don't need to know the science to know that yellow means hot, red means cooler. And here's what's gonna happen. If, when this kiln comes up, if it starts edging, creeping, 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 over 1320, 716, I might open the door to let a little bit of the heat. I don't like doing it, but sometimes you gotta do it because it's gonna take a lot longer to melt all this enamel because we have such a lower temperature. That's my plan. All right, what are we doing? 1298, nothing's melted. Honestly, I'm just having an existential crisis. Oh my God, what's going on? Why? 13, 13, 13, 14, 13, 15, 16. Oh my God. 18. All right, we'll just, gonna just keep it gonna give it it's gonna come up faster too like a little jerk 1275 88 all right all right all right all right I'm pulling it out all right let's see what we got we got it let me Let's see what we have. Interesting, interesting. Hard to tell until things get cool. We just don't know what is going on. So we'll come back. And I don't know if I can handle the stress of it all doing it live like this. Definitely want to do another coat. And something weird happened over here. Hmm. Is it weird? I guess we'll find out. You know what? Fuck it. Let's put the other two in to do it. Let's do these next. 
and we're going to do it exactly the same. If we can handle, if my heart can handle it. Let's just pull you guys down. All right, we're getting, we're, ooh. we'll see if we have it. Well, it's not white. How's that? It's not white. It remains to be seen if there's any opalescence in there. Um, I think the second coat kind of will do it. The second coat is the definitive coat. Oh, 98. I shouldn't have wandered off. Nothing's even melted in there. So, and these are two different colors. Who knows? See how much faster we're going up though. 1315, 1315. 1317. Just a little bloops. A little tiny bloops. I'm probably gonna have to do open the door a couple times. Once you start opening the door, it tends to kind of overcompensate, you know, I'm gonna make like a little 17. All right, not quite order up, but because we're going to do another coat, usually the second coat is the definitive coat. Let's pull you guys off. Oh, let's see what we've got. At least it definitely doesn't look white. So we've got some interesting things happening. These are going to take a little bit to cool, but these are ready to go. Let's go look at them under. Let's have a close examination of these. Maybe a little. It's the workbench. All right. A little, a little, a little. I'm going to do another coat. And the good news is it didn't go white. So, and usually the second firing is what brings out the opalescence. So let's just soldier on, soldier on. And I'm just Let's see if I, I actually, this one, I'm just going to put it in the middle, the middle. I'm just going to put it a blob in the middle and we've got our T8 here. We'll let those other two cool. It'll just take a moment. So let's just keep moving forward. Let's see a little bit. Still loving this orange. A little bit. The next, the next coat is sink or swim. And you know. Sorry, I forgot to put that.
just slightly under fired, but that's good. All righty. Good. I don't know what would be worse, going white or not getting any opalescence. And then finally, see if we have enough to. Big drop of water there. That's perfect. I'm just going to go put these under the lamp and let them dry on their own because I don't want to scooch this around too much. Alrighty, we got it. We got it. I've got, let's see if these are hot. Nope, they're nice and cool. Alright, now let's see how these are doing. Oh, pretty though. Oh, actually, I'm seeing a little bit in this one. These came out interesting. These are a little bit more interesting. I can see the opalescent starting to develop on the yellow for sure. Looks really interesting. And not sure what I see here. A little bit. Let's just keep four. Let's just do one final coat because remember the second coat is the is the charm. Let's make sure we get the actual opal. We'll start with that, and I'm just going to put it right in this area here and see if anything comes of it. Probably. Our fickle friends. There we go. Perfect. And then our two colors of opal. This, this one. And then where is our, our opal hunter? All right. Um, people are gonna.
That'll do. So we've got these two that we're going to let dry. All right. So the, the final, the final firing will Will we get any opalescent? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm having, there we go. Let's do it. Let's put these under the light. Let me go see if those other ones are dry. Honestly, um, they might need another moment. Maybe I'll do them all at the same time. Oh, I'm gonna do all, I'm gonna let them all dry and I'm gonna do them all at the same time just because I like to torture myself. So they need another moment. So we can just hang out. Just hang out. Let's see. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. So how's everybody doing with your enamel art jam? I should, uh, this has been on the whole time. The Vimeo. Don't forget the enamel. Art jam. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's, whatever. I'm sure they're dry. Let's go put them in the kiln. We'll put the first three in the kiln at least, and then we'll let the other two dry. Let's go to the kiln jam. The kiln, not the kiln a jam, the kiln cam. Kiln cam. There we are. Remember our temperature. I'm not even going to say it again. So. We'll do these. There we go. All right. Beautiful. Well, the sun is left and it seems to have gotten blustery, blustery outside. I guess that's March for you. Twelve oh eight. Starting to pay attention. Twelve sixty six. No, well, nothing's happening. Don't look pretty white. It's not a great sign. All right, they're starting. Thirteen fifteen. Thirteen fifteen. Sixteen. I'm 
going to pull them out, see what's going on. You think? Should do it. Oh, a little bit more. No, I think it's fine. We're a little underdone, but that's all right. That's all right. Let's get you guys off. That one looks so weird. Look how brown this weird color is. I'm not sure. Look how strange they look when they're just out, especially that one on the left. Let's see if I can zoom. There we go. I can definitely see some opalescence. Oh my God, thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll see what's happening over there. It's just a little weirdness. But, all right, let's put the other two in and call it a day, honestly. Call it a day with this. A little, yeah, no, I see opalescence. We have opalescence. Is it worth all this hullabaloo? Hullabaloo, no. There we go. All right, we'll just do that. Hmm. Let's pull these off so we can see what's going on. What are we at? 12.28. Oh, I see we have some. Let's see. All right, we're almost there. Hold on, hold on. 13.03. Incoming. Thirteen. Oh, fuck. Damn it. What was I thinking? I was complete. This has happened every single time. I'm like having a little fucking daydream and we're not quite ready. Mm, that's how you that's how you get milky whiteness. <sighs> Daydreaming. I just don't think I have the temperament for this. Get back in there. <laughs> I'm gonna just I'm just gonna walk away. Alrighty. six my ass one of them was perfectly smooth the other was not probably should have done them individually because they obviously have slightly different melting temperatures so there we go I'm gonna pull this one out this one's done I'm putting that one back in because it's not melted. Which one was that? Oh, that's the yellow. Mm. Oh, I do, maybe a little bit. All right, you know, I'm just gonna zoom out. 12, 40. there we go.
the inner workings. Come on, you little friend. There we go. Hmm. You know what? At some point, you just have to let it cool and see what you have. I don't know why that one would not melt. We'll just look at the other ones while that one cools. There we go. All this. All right. Hmm? Ow. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I'll take you guys. All right. Hmm. Pretty though. Let. Angie says, I feel your pain. I was doing the same thing last weekend. Oh, I know. It's just, let's go back here. <laughs> and I'm like, am I even, do I consider myself an ex expert enamel artist? I do. Do I love opalescence? And I'm just sharing this quite literally with you guys because I don't think I'm even going to export this video to YouTube, whatever. No. Mm. I don't think... Whatever. I just don't think that opalescents are my thing. I just don't think it. I mean, they're fine. They're fine. Uh, I got a little bit of opalescence. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Um, uh, you know what? A little opalescence is better than a lot of grossness. Let me go get those other two pieces and we'll look at those. And honestly, I overwashed. I know exactly what I did because I was so afraid of it going to... Um, I'm going to put this one back in. All right, I'm going to put this little guy back in, I think. Let me look at you. Well. All right, I'm putting this one guy back into the kiln just because I know we don't have the kiln cam going because it just did not get melted. And I think it went a little bit... Well, you know, but so we might as well put that back in. Let's look at this one. I have something in the kiln. This one actually looks a little, the most opaly of them all, for sure. Got to look at it under the, I think one more coat, probably. I'm going to say these two have the most opalescence. Yeah, I think I under, I overwashed because I didn't want it to get whatever. Um, so I have that last piece. That last piece is in the kiln. We'll see how it all turns out. Um, we'll have a little, once I pull that out of the kiln, it's like a come to... I had fun though, we had fun, didn't we? <laughs> Yeah, no one is going to subscribe to my Vimeo channel now. What are we going to do? Um, I've promised opalescence. I got some on this one and a little bit on that one. Honestly, if I put this one back in, I bet it would go more. Um, but yeah, do you see opalescence in mine? My regular work? No. Oh, how cute. A bunch of girls just walk by and they're all dressed like leprechauns. Oh, or were they leprechauns? Who knows? All right, crap. There we go, there we go, there we go. 13. This one, um, 10, there we go. Why? All right, I mean, let's just look at that one later. We're gonna let that cool. It's all fine, it's all fun and games. There and there, that's when my career ended. So there we have it. They do look like dragon skin. Um, 
But, and you know what? I'm still excited about making these eyeballs because, um, will I incorporate the opalescent? I know I've made a huge promise. Um, I'm probably going to spend another day fooling around. I usually take Saturday off, but I think I'm going to come in tomorrow and do a few other. I know I said I only had five of those, but I actually have a couple more <laughs> in the in the jar. I think I'm going to go make a couple more because honestly, I think I was. I'm. I see the most opalescent in this one. Uh, I see a little bit in this one. This one I don't see much at all. Actually, I see some in this. You can kind of see as it hits the the thing. So they're not terrible, honestly. They could have gone terrible. I'm gonna grab that other one because I think the other one didn't quite. It's just, when they work out, it's so lovely. And when they don't, oh, actually this one, it got a little bit dark, the yellow, but could use a little bit more, but it actually has a lot of opalescence in that one. So I could still a little bit underdone, but I decided that that is fine. So they're interesting color combos for sure. So yes, there, there they are, there they be. So is this still hot? I bet it is. Yes, I'll get you off. There you go. Oh, the green actually. So I think the green, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do a little bit more. Um, this certainly was nice. They'll be good. All right, well, you know what? That, that just about wraps up our fun, ow, it was hot. <laughs> you know, they bite you back. They, those opal, I'm blaming the opals on that. Had nothing to do with that, but um, that one's still hot. So yes, anyway, if you want to, here, let me show you what's happening. I just posted the video where we've made, we have three eyeballs. Each eyeball has a different texture. That one is kind of scaly and this one, is nubbly. And so in the next video, if you subscribe to my Vimeo channel, whatever, I'll throw that back up. If you subscribe to that, we'll make eyeballs. We'll make these eyeballs. Maybe they'll have a little, a tiny, a tiny dab of opalescent and maybe they won't. I will let you know. That will be coming up on the 15th of, oh, sorry, the first of the next month. So I don't even know. So anyway, have a great weekend, everybody. I am calling it a day. Oh yeah, Vimeo, I'm actually going to be recording it probably Sunday because I'm going to be out of town. I'm doing the whole week. I'm going to Pocuson, Pocuson, I don't know how to say that art center. Pocuson Art Center for one week for Project Mesh. Mary Lee Ray is going to be there. Um, Amy Roper Lyons, Anne Havel, a bunch of really top notch enamel artists, and we're going to spend a whole week uh, sharing ideas. Um, I will not be sharing anything about opalescence unless it's to cry on Mary Lee's. You know, I'm just going to let her have the queen of the opalescence. Um, title because um, it's just what it is. So anyway, take care everybody and happy Leprechaun Day. Have a good weekend.